Dear friends, hello and welcome today to the Bourget Air Show. We're at a booth that scares some people. It's the brand Endural Endural. <laughs> It's special, though it really shouldn't be. They use approved civilian equipment and existing materials and concepts instead of starting from scratch. As a result, they save an incredible amount of money and they want to disrupt defense. Like SpaceX, Elon Musk made space much cheaper and is doing many things around us. There's the interceptor drone, there's the combat drone, but we'll start with the cruise missile called the Barracuda. It comes in various sizes with a 1000 kilometer range and 50 kilos payload as an example. It's about six to eight times smaller than a scalp missile, but can travel nearly twice the distance. Here's the mind-blowing part. It's 150,000 euros, or exactly $150,000. We're talking about very cheap prices at 800 kilometers per hour. So we're dealing with subsonic speeds, with impact sensors, with electro-optics. That means you can see the target to readjust. Inertial navigation and using landmarks let you keep navigating even without global positioning system. That's not a lie, it's already flying. It's been tested and now they're waiting for the final order so they can move on to large scale production. The Barracuda is also palletizable, what does that mean? You can stack them, easily take them apart and load the military payload based on the desired impact on the group. You can also remove them, they are palletizable so you can deploy dozens on a parachute dropped pallet in one spot. You can launch them from the ground in ground to ground mode or they can be dropped from the air by F-15, SF-16S and so on. It's a bit too big to be launched from the internal bay of an F-35. So for the F-35 there's a smaller version next to it so it can be launched from their bay. Behind me we're moving on to another concept which is interception. This one is already operational, already deployed in the field. Its goal is to keep things simple. It's an interceptor, it's an anti-aircraft missile, except it's not a missile it's a kind of large drone you can see it vertical takeoff and possibly vertical landing what's it for imagine now you have ten shad kamikaze drones coming at you your guys on the front line with their heavy machine guns they'll intercept five so you still launch about 10 road runners right from the start your road runner it's gonna circle around for a while they didn't tell me exactly but I think it's more than an hour it's going to circle in the sky in the meantime the first five sheds were destroyed so the five roadrunners that are there, they're going to hit the ones that are coming in to protect, for example, a base or an environment that is valuable, and then the others will come to rest. That means you don't need to fire two missiles to try to intercept a vector that's coming at you. Like we do, for example, with Patriot missiles. When you're being fired at with missiles that are very fast, you can launch one, intercept, and then come back down. And here, we're talking about tens of thousands of euros. It's now cheaper than a Shahed, which currently costs over 50,000 euros, unlike earlier generations. Uh, that's operational, it's already deployed. I asked him, is it in Ukraine? He said, I can't answer that. We'll end with the most impressive and biggest one, the Fury. We're not talking about a drone, we're not talking about a remotely piloted combat aircraft, like you might think with drones. The MQ-9 and reconnaissance and intelligence, one still require a pilot, but the pilot operates remotely instead of from the cockpit. And in terms of manpower, obviously it requires resources, it requires people, it requires training and pilots who are trained to ultimately operate drones. Sometimes they're not necessarily happy, whereas here we're really talking about a drone that's going to be completely autonomous. That's why we're talking about an autonomous combat aircraft. Its goal is to be able to do what's called the Royal Wingman. It will join combat aircraft like the F-35 and F-22 on their mission. Tomorrow the F-47 will be ready to fly this summer. Its first flight will take place soon. For now this first version is rather small compared to the other ambitions they have. It lacks a bomb base, so munitions mount under the wings. The interior is highly modular. A single engine. They'll probably reuse F-16 or F-35 engines depending on its use. It would need that. At the front you can put the radar or the electronic warfare pod or sensors or electro-optics. So once again it depends on the needs. And there's no need to have a pilot take control of this aircraft. We're just going to assign it a mission. And here I'll be very straightforward. Uh, the founders of Endural are also people who come from there. 
For example, creators of augmented reality glasses at Facebook and Google, experienced in this field and true video game fans. So human-machine interfaces are their thing. They want us to have incredible ease in using complex equipment, just like we do in futuristic video games. We have combat drones and fighter jets with one person, rather than three operators like we would have, for example, in a maritime patrol aircraft. And so, this ease of being able to give it a mission, to assign it a mission, means that we are truly operating autonomously. It's not simply unpiloted. It will also complement the F-35 fighter jet Enduril and Fury. It will go to the side, both of them will have the electronic warfare sensor. I know the enemy radar is there, and the other person on the side knows it too. We do a triangulation, we know where the radar is, so we can destroy it with a long-range munition. And it will recognize its target, because by having the radar signature, we know how to identify it. The cruise missile's image database will recognize the target. And know that this is what we have to strike, even if we don't have very high precision and we're off by a few kilometers. It will circle, turn in the sky, find the target and go destroy it. So they have concepts like that which are really interesting, really revolutionary. There are larger sizes. It's likely they'll have a stealth version with an internal bay. To have a range and be able to accompany stealth aircraft without the drone revealing the presence of the planes that are supposed to be stealthy. There you go. But we're still working with concepts that are innovative, affordable and fast. It scares everyone, let's be very clear about that. It's the same in the United States, where the other major players weren't prepared for this kind of disruption. Just like Ariane's space was challenged by Elon Musk with SpaceX. Uh, it's happening in the United States, we should do the same, because I feel like what's happening here mirrors Ukraine and now it's threatening our industry. If we're not able to do this very quickly, obviously they're going to uh, come and take over our markets and all our major players are going to take a hit. Exactly like uh, what's happening in the United States for the benefit of Endural. It's good for the American army, costs less for Americans and increases potential and vectors. That means they're gaining mass for cheap rather than developing equipment that costs a lot. In in the end, they're the only ones. What were the big American industrialists doing then? I hope you enjoyed it. It's a brand you'll likely hear about in the coming years. Today, I showed you what they were stealing, but when you check out their website and their YouTube channel, it doesn't stop there. There are even modular submarines. All right, I'll see you very soon. See you very soon.